What's up, everyone? Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. We have a lot to talk about today. Fernando Tatis Jr. had his best game in nearly two years, while Juan Soto might have had the worst game of his entire career. So we're going to talk about if the Padres regret trading for Juan Soto. Otani, he hit a baseball 558 feet again. The Yankees, they popped off for a season-high 12 runs, but of course, Joey Gallo hit another one. So we'll see if the Twins got back into it. The Cardinals, in my opinion, made a stupid move, and karma, it acted swiftly. All of that in today's MLB recap, but before we get into that, a quick word from today's sponsor. We're going to hop back on a so rare MLB and see how our squad is doing this week. Now, you guys know I've been getting cooked by rain delays and injuries, but we haven't seen any of that this week. We're looking pretty good. Ozzy Albies is leading the pack right now with 53 points for the squad with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Masataka Yoshida both at 34 points. And Patrick Sandoval is thrown against the A's this week. I'm expecting big things because he's always on the A's. I know that other creators who play so rare MLB like Jurassic Nick, Mark, Shelfie, all those guys, they have yet to earn a limited card as well, so I'm trying to beat them there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and choose my squad for the April 28th tournament, so it's starting here pretty soon. Make sure you guys click that link in the description to join. So we have Julio Urias as our starter. We're going to go with Pete Fairbanks because the Rays just keep on winning. I got to go with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. because if you guys do not see, there's a plus seven. That means the more you play a card, the more bonus points you're going to earn. So I'm going to go with Vladdy. I'm going to go Ozzy Albies. Got to go Mike Trout. I'm going to go with Pablo Lopez as a a bounce back candidate after getting shelled the last time that we saw him. So please, Pablo and Pablo, we trust. Shout out one more time to So Rare MLB for sponsoring today's video. They have been my favorite company to work with. The fact that they are backed by Major League Baseball. This game has honestly turned into one of my favorite things to check in on during the week. So make sure you guys click that link in the description. Try and beat myself, Draft Dunk Mark, and other creators in the community. I'll see you guys out there and enjoy the rest of the recap. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the games from yesterday. So the Reds and the Rangers faced off again. Since Cincinnati has found themselves on a little hot streak. They have beaten the Rangers two times in a row, going for their third win. Henry Ramos, he tripled in the game's first run, but that was kind of it in regards to the fun stuff, so we're going to skip to the ninth inning. Cincinnati, they unfortunately blew a 3-2 lead in the top half, so it's knotted up for Nick Senzel, and he ends it. The best moment of his career so far, I genuinely thought that Nick Senzel was going to be a star. Back in 2019 in his rookie season, he had 12 home runs, 14 stolen bases with elite speed and defense, but injuries kind of ate him alive. All of that really to say he has sky high talent and I'm hoping that this is the year where he finally breaks through and breaks out. Baltimore faced off against the Red Sox and Masataka Yoshida is having himself a monster week. He's hitting 464 with three home runs and 10 RBIs over his last 10 games. Again, he has been going off. Just unfortunately, he was basically the only real threat to Baltimore's pitching staff yesterday. Before we show the pitching, I do want to mention that Ramon Urias, that RBI set up a four for four day. He was really good yesterday. He led the charge for Tyler Wells, who was fantastic yet again. Seven strikeouts, just one walk on the day. He has a very impressive 2.79 ERA on the season. Baltimore, they scored six without hitting a single home run. I think they only had one extra base hit the entire game. Baltimore, they went easy. They are top seven in ERA over the last two weeks, so they're getting it done on both sides. The Toronto Blue Jays and the Chicago White Sox. So, like, either Yusei Kikuchi is finally fixed or the White Sox are broken beyond repair. Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. They teamed up. They brought home three in the third inning on a single and a two-run double from Vladdy. He's been a machine over the last few days. He's hitting 320 with six RBIs over his last six games. You say he's been locked in since spring training. He tossed up zero after zero. He came away with eight strikeouts over nearly six shutout innings. He did not allow any home runs, which is huge because the home run has been his biggest issue over the last two seasons. He needs to keep up that momentum. From there, it was just pathetic if you're a White Sox fan. The Chicago bullpen gave up a nuke to Bo Bichette a two-run double to Whit Merrifield, and Bo Bichette capped off a three-RBI day with an RBI single in the eighth inning, while the Toronto bullpen no-hit the White Sox after Yusei Kikuchi came out. So the Blue Jays, they have won four in a row, whereas the White Sox, they're second to last in Team ERA and they're third last in Team OPS as an offense. So they're bottom feeders no matter how you slice it. It's It's been awful. Arizona and the Royals, um, listen, I'm not saying that Zach Gallen is the best pitcher in baseball, but he might be the best pitcher in baseball. Now, thank God Arizona's offense broke through in the fourth and the fifth because I would have been so mad if Zach Gallen did not get this W. Honestly, I just kind of want to show Zach Gallen highlights for the next few moments because this man struck out 12, 12 hitters, and he only threw six and a third. Now he has 51 strikeouts and 37 innings this year. He has not allowed a single run to score since April 4th. That's 28 consecutive innings without allowing a single run to score. Over his last four starts, he struck out 41 hitters while 
only walking one. That is a 41 to one strikeout to walk ratio. Andrew Chafin, he steps in for his fourth save of the year. Zach Gallen, he is so much fun to watch. Back to back to back shutouts that we're gonna talk about. So we saw that the Diamondbacks shut out the Royals, the Jays shut out the White Sox, and the impossible was done in this Astros versus Rays game. The Astros shut out the Rays in back to back games. Now, Houston got their only run of the entire game in the first inning, so it's not like they popped off and embarrassed the Rays, but Pena, he scored after a Wander Franco error. Josh Fleming, he was really good. He came in for six innings, did not allow a single run to score, but the Rays couldn't muster anything off of the rookie. Yes, Hunter Brown, he is still a rookie. He's looking like a prime AL Rookie of the Year candidate right now. Seven shutout innings, eight strikeouts. He only allowed two base hits on the day. Since last year when he made his debut, over his first 50 innings in the big leagues, he has a combined 1.78 ERA and a 2.3 FIP. Both of those are insane numbers. Houston right now is not missing Justin Verlander at all. They are second in baseball in Team ERA after Ryan Presley converted his second save. Houston is 7-3 and three over their last 10, so they're catching fire. The Guardians and the Rockies, this game got me so pumped up. I know it's just the Rockies, but hear me out. Josh Naylor, he pummeled a two-run home run for his rookie pitcher, Tanner Bybee, who was making his MLB debut yesterday, and the kid was nasty. At one point, he struck out the side in the second inning and then struck out the first two hitters in the third, making it five consecutive strikeouts. He kept on cooking. He eventually ended his debut with one earned run over five and two thirds. He struck out eight with no walks. And the no walks part is insane considering he's making his debut and usually nerves set in and that plays a role in walking a few in your debut. Will Brennan, shout out to him, looking like Grady Sizemore in center field, kind of saving the game. Emmanuel Classe, he came in for an easy ninth inning. He closed it out for his eighth of the season. But this week was basically Christmas coming early for Guardians fans. Logan T. Allen, a top pitching prospect, went six innings with one earned run, eight strikeouts in his debut. Tanner Bybee just barely missed six innings, but he also only gave up one earned run with eight strikeouts. And for some context, those two guys aren't even the top pitching prospects for Cleveland. You have Daniel Espino trying to get healthy, and Gavin Williams is a six foot five, six foot six monster. He's going to be amazing. Cleveland, they just stay being a complete pitching factory. They are dominating on that end. The Yankees versus the Twins. This is this was the game that Yankees fans have been waiting for all season long. In the blink of an eye, it was five to nothing. Anthony Volpe had an RBI single, which was followed by Judge ripping a base clearing double. He has 11 extra base hits and two stolen bases. And I bring up the stolen bases because the mans must have thought he was Ricky Henderson for a second. He tried to steal third base and got scorpioned on the slide. He immediately went down to the tunnel, but he says that he's okay. So he stayed in the game. I was scared for a second. There's Anthony Volpe again. That's a two run double. He's hitting 296 with five stolen bases and a 436 on base percentage over his last 13 games, which is perfect for a leadoff guy. The guy is finally waking up. Rizzo doubled in two more and Glaber Torres, he got them into double digits with his third home run of the year. And just for fun, I wanted to show Joey's seventh home run. He has a home run every six at bats and he's striking out 35% of the time. So Joey Gallo, he's back, but they lose big to the Yankees. They lose by a score of 12 to six. The Brewers and the Tigers, this game was over within the first 30 minutes. Rowdy Telez and Brian Anderson, they combined for three RBIs in the first inning and Victor Caratini, he blasted off for a two run home run in the third inning. Freddie Peralta really needed this start because he's been roughed up lately. He was amazing yesterday in a bounce back performance. He struck out eight over six innings, his first quality start, like I mentioned in a few weeks. Joey Weimer, he needed a breakout performance as well. He's been not very good over the last few weeks. That's his first home run since I believe the first week of the season. A super easy game to recap. Milwaukee, in fact, does not get swept by the Tigers. Pittsburgh versus LA. The Pirates, now this is just my opinion, but they should be on a nine game winning streak, but they completely folded the game prior. They blew a seven to one lead. Both pitching staffs in this one were super stingy to begin this one. Tony Gonsolin, he was out there for, I believe his first start of 2023. My script says 2021, what was I thinking? Anyways, he was limited to just 65 pitches because again, he was coming back from injury, but he almost went four shutout, only allowed two base hits. On the flip side, Rollins the Contreras of the Pirates, he was lights out again. All he needed was one single run and the Pirates lineup, they had his back. Brian Reynolds and Andrew McCutcheon singled in the first two runs of this game, which is crazy to say out loud because back in 2018, Brian Reynolds was traded for Andrew McCutcheon, just kind of a full circle moment. Like I mentioned, Rowenzi Contreras, he was sensational. He struck out five over six scoreless. He has an impressive 3.01 FIP on the year. FIP is just a really cool stat to see how good a pitcher is all by himself. How good is a pitcher at striking people out, not allowing walks, not allowing home runs, stuff like that. Pittsburgh kept on scoring. They ended up with 
an eight run barrage after a two run single from Jason DeLay. That's his third RBI of the game and he's hitting 370 on the year. The Pirates are eight and two in their last 10 and they've outscored opponents by 31 runs. They're still one game ahead of the Brewers for first place in the NL Central. This was a really fun game to recap. Logan Gilbert and Taiwan Walker both got lit up. They allowed multiple, multiple runs in the first few innings. There's a two run oppo taco from Nick Castellanos, which is a fantastic sign. More of that, please. Castellanos is way better when he's not trying to pull baseballs and he goes the other way. And my God, JP Crawford, what a swing. That grand slam was followed by J-Rod's fifth home run of the year. But this Phillies team, they have been playing different over the last week or two. They were not going to go down without a fight. Schwarber and Castellanos, they both had RBI singles to bring it to a 5-4 score. When JT Romuto hit a rocket single up the middle in the eighth to even up the score, they just need one more to complete the comeback. And there you go. Alec Bohm, he knocked in Brandon Marsh. Alec is hitting 298 with eight extra base hits and 20 RBIs on the season. Jose Alvarado, he struck out two more in his fourth save. I just want to say this. Jose Alvarado has 22 strikeouts in 11 innings. He has 171 strikeouts over his last 118 innings. That's a 13 strikeouts per nine. Atlanta and the Miami Marlins. Bryce Elder got lit up for the first time this season. He allowed a bunch of runs early and the first few came on solo shots. Hopefully the offense can pick up their pitcher and Ronald, yeah, he understood the assignment. 445 feet, my goodness. He has four home runs, 13 stolen bases while hitting 363. He is back and better than ever. He's leading baseball with a 1.9 F war already. Von Grissom, he tacked on with an RBI single and Matt Olson cracked his seventh home run as Eddie Rosario, he's on one of those rare hot streaks for Eddie Rosario. Three extra base hits and four RBIs over his last five games. That RBI triple tied it up and Von Grissom completed the comeback. He has a negative six career DRS so the defense it really needs some work it is a big time question mark but offensively I think he's going to be just fine AJ Minter he has five saves on the year as the Braves are 17 and 8 that's really good San Diego versus Chicago Jake the rake Cronenworth he legged out a two run three bagger to start the scoring but things kind of went quiet over the next few innings for San Diego Chicago shut them out for a while and the Cubs actually stole the lead in the fifth off of Michael Walker who has been terrible he's allowed 19 runs on 33 hits in 25 innings the offense is going to have to save him from taking the L and look who did it. Fernando Tatis Jr. found a hole in that third base shortstop gap so he knocked in two to reclaim the lead. That was for Nick Martinez who is transitioning back into a relief pitcher. He said that he was fine with the move because he has guaranteed money like he's getting paid as a starter even though he's a reliever so he doesn't care where he's pitching. Fernando brought home another as Josh Hader shut it down for his league best ninth save of the year and now it's unfortunately time to talk about how bad Juan Soto has been. The Padres win five to three but for the first time in Juan Soto's young career he went 0 for 5 with three strikeouts in a single game he has never done that before now a lot of fans across the league are asking was trading for Juan Soto a mistake even though he's getting on base he's showing a little bit of pop the strikeouts and the contact rate are a big issue right now if you don't remember Juan Soto turned down a 14 year 440 million dollar contract extension from the Nationals he turned that down and right now it still seems like he's going to get a lot of money but 440 million dollars as bad as he's been recently, I don't know who's going to give him that. We're going to talk about the Nationals game right after because that was Juan Soto's former team. And trust me, there's a point to why we're talking about the Padres and the Nationals back to back. For the first time in two years, the Mets have officially lost four games in a row. And again, I bring this up because San Diego traded away a bunch of prospects, including their top pitching prospect, Mackenzie Gore. And he was incredible last night. So Juan Soto over five with three strikeouts. Washington, they scored a few on some singles from Lane Thomas and CJ Abrams. And from there, I mean, things got a little bit gory. Okay, all jokes aside, Mackenzie Gore, he struck out 10 over six innings. This kid is going to be so good. Both him and Josiah Gray have been really good this year. He would honestly be San Diego's best pitcher right now, not named Yu Darvish. So that could be a thing that they're talking about in the next few weeks because if Juan Soto doesn't pick it up, yeah, that's not good. Obviously, you just saw Candelario pop off for his fourth home run. Kyle Finnegan, he struck out two for his fifth save of the year. I'm not saying the Nationals are going to be World Series favorites in the next two years, but if Josiah Gray and Mackenzie Gore keep this up and if you get Robert Hassel the second and James Wood to contribute on a major league level the Nationals are going to be pretty good I'm going to keep it real with you guys in the entirety of history of major league baseball this had to be one of the most predictable outcomes ever so let's get started Brandon Jury is having himself an insane week there's another RBI extra base hit and more on him in just a second Matt Thais or Thais I don't know exactly how to say his last name he had a two-run double and then Zach Neto he ripped one as well Renfro he was back in there 
after his first rest day of the entire season. He's hitting 280 with seven home runs. He has 36 home runs over his last 149 games dating back to last year. Brandon Jury, another home run. He's hitting 346 with three home runs and nine RBIs over his last six starts. Patrick Sandoval, he was back in business after getting shellacked in his previous two starts, but he's always been lights out versus Oakland. Five strikeouts over seven innings. He did not walk anyone, and there he is. The unicorn himself, Mr. Shohei Otani, has six home runs, 16 RBIs, three stolen bases, all while sporting a 0.64 ERA on the mound. What in God's name did I just say? So the Angels win easy 11-3, to and let's talk about the final game from yesterday, the Giants versus the Cardinals. We'll talk about the stupid move from St. Louis right after these highlights. So Paul Goldschmidt, he was the leading baseballs to start this one. There's a home run in the first and then a second one in the third. But like um, the Cardinals pitching staff imploded yet again. Lamont Wade Jr. launched his first home run of the year and Austin Slater kind of forgot that he existed. He tied it at two runs and the wheels completely fell off for St. Louis as Anthony Descalfani, he looked good yet again. He gets the lead on a fifth inning wild pitch and Anthony just continues to impress after another quality start. This time he struck out six. Wilmer Flores had a two run tater in the seventh and Michael Conforto and Lamont Wade Jr. They push it to an eight spot. Uh, yeah, Camilo Duvall, he came in for his third save. And I don't really have much else to say about this Cardinals team. They're 9-16. and 16. That's seven games under 500. Oh, wait, I do have something to say. They sent down their 20-year-old super prospect, Jordan Walker. He had five extra base hits, 11 RBIs, and two stolen bases in his first 20 games. He also had a 101 OPS+, plus, which is not insane by any metrics, but that is above league average. Maybe he needs some work in AAA with the defense or the plate discipline, but I don't know. This St. Louis team all around kind of has bad vibes. Is that even a thing to say? Just something feels off about this 2023 Cardinals team, and to me, it stems from the pitching being so terrible. Yo, this was one of the rare days where my brain kind of worked the entire video, and I was able to articulate myself fairly well. So thank you guys for watching until the end if you did. Sorry about my random tangent. Enjoy the web gems. Run. Line. He's going to catch that on a backhander. He's out there on the bump. You got to feel pretty athletic after a play like this. Loser Ryan Presley. There's a line drive speared by Jeremy Pena. A couple of great defensive plays, but that one in the bottom of the ninth of this one nothing game. Oh, what a play in the dive. Diaz throws one hop. Got it. Yes. So a run for the Angels. The inning ends in spectacular fashion. There goes Carroll for Means throw. Comes in on a hop and got, got him. Mean has a cannon. And he put that ball down low. That's 89 with a homer and six RBIs. Lines this to right. And Connor Joe got a great jump.